Howdy! How's everybody out there in YouTube land today? I hope this finds you well. Boy, we got a bunch of people packing into the house. They all run it in here. We got Mark Lindsay, CNC in the house. We got Anita's New Adventures in the house. We got David Roby in the house. Jim Bashirs is in the house. And we got my big mouth of running over here on the other screen that I got to shut off. <laughs> One of Arnie, me is enough. <laughs> Arneal Media just showed up. Hello, Steve. Good to see you. Welcome, everybody. Share this thing out and let's let's get a bunch of people in the house and have some fun. Uh, we got Simply Wooden Creations in the house. He says, I am actually on time. Yes, you are. Bless your heart. Glad to have you with us. Share this thing out. Hit that like button. If you don't like it, if you don't like what we do here, hit that other one, that down, that, that thumb down thing. Hit that twice. <laughs> <laughs> you, you hit it once and then you hit it the second time for good measure, you know? <laughs> Stream Elements is on the job. It, it's it's running uh, running out there telling us telling us that it's running. It's good. <laughs> I like the little robot. <laughs> oh, Nita said she shared it out. Thank you very much. I don't want to be the best kept secret on the internet. Yeah, thank you, Anita. I, I, maybe she watched one of your Heifer Havens where it says share, share, share. Share, share. Now, share. You changed the ticker. It says, did I mention share? <laughs> It used to say, don't forget to share, right. but you switched it up on yeah. that. See, I noticed. That's right. You know, I, I got to switch it up on you every once in a while. I'll just keep you on your toes. <laughs> That's right. Uh-oh. I, uh -oh. I uh, forgot to give a thumbs up on the video. Oh, Lord have mercy. We got to hit the button. Now, I see, thought I did. I thought I did. <laughs> Now see, I've got I've got another button too. When you're a good boy and you hit the button like you're supposed to, you know, and you, you hit the, the little thumb, then then I'll play this one. That was easy. See? Got it. Otherwise you're gonna get to bless your heart. <laughs> Ain't nobody wanting to get to bless your heart. <laughs> Matt's grounded and he gets the cowbell. LOL, says Anita. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of the, the best kept secret, I guess, here in the neighborhood up until, you know, the big debacle uh, that happened with the thieves and stuff. And yeah. I have made myself extremely well known in the neighborhood. They ain't nobody that don't know who I am now. <laughs> Let me ask a question to the uh, chat. How's my audio? Is it the same audio level as Brenda, or am I quiet or louder? Please let me know. I have a new setup. I'm not using my my new audio setup. I went back to the old one. Let's see what they got to say about your audio. I think you sound good, but then, you know, I'm, I'm hearing myself through the headphones. and Sounds good here, says Anita. Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm not overpowering Brenda or I'm not real a whisper to Brenda. There ain't no way that you're going <laughs> to overpower me. <laughs> it was a technical reference. You couldn't overpower me on your best day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got, we have a bunch of sounds good. That's that's good. <laughs> Did you notice that, that I'm color coordinated? Yeah, look at that. And like, I went to a warm color myself. Not the same color as you, but you know. I mean, yeah, th 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 this is my prison shirt. You know, <laughs> I had to wear this shirt back when I needed bail money. <laughs> <laughs> See, I figure if I wear this, uh huh, then I would be a red shirt and I would probably die when I beam yeah. down on the surface. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be the end of you right there. I'm thinking of you, Al, Al Forte, Kilroy79763. They, they made them wear red shirts to show that they were disposable, didn't they? <laughs> you can be eliminated. Yeah. <laughs> Not assimilated. <laughs> uh, hey, Maker238's here. Deloach, Maker238 Deloach. Welcome back Good to the to show. Good to have you with us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Everybody's welcome in here. You I never have, know what we're liable to do next or talk about next or what, what happens. I, I have, did 
I did want to let everybody know, though, that uh, I, I, I'm on the downhill side of the big miss that I went through. Most people know about the thieving that took place where somebody took a saw to my van and decided to re relieve it of its catalytic converter. And uh, so I think I'm on the downhill side of that debacle now. And uh, I believe that I've got money up to pay for the repairs and, and everything. And I'm going to be getting all that situation under control here in the next couple of days. And I really wanted to tell everybody, I appreciate beyond anything you can imagine, the help and the outpouring that came my way. Uh, it was extremely humbling. And I really appreciate everything that everybody did for me. So uh, uh, I think the uh, GoFundMe is going to have to be up for a couple of days while money transfers and stuff, but that, that will be coming down. And uh, I, I really thank everybody for everything that they did. And, well, we're happy to help. I mean, uh, you know, there's, you do so much for the community, Brenda. So, um, well, yeah. I'm just being me, well, you know, I mean, just, what more just, can you ask for? You know, people tell me all the time, well, you're funny. <laughs> uh, well, I'm just telling it like it is, you know, the way I see it. If that's funny and you enjoy it, well, that's good. You know, yeah. I'd, I'd rather be funny than Debbie Downer or Karen. Oh. <laughs> or Mega Karen. <laughs> She's like the, the main boss of the video game. <laughs> I had somebody ask me in the comments on one of my videos once about, why are you always so happy? And I said, well, it beats the alternative. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really a good response for that question. You know, it, it beats the alternative. You got to, you know, just be as happy as you can be. There ain't no reason just to sit around being upset about stuff all the time. And Lord knows, in the last couple of weeks here, I've had plenty of reason to be upset about stuff. Uh, <laughs> but you you got to find the humor in it and, and go on. Sorry. Well, thank you, Anita. She, she says I'm a sweetheart. I don't know. I mean, I've got some ex-husbands that would disagree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's people out there in the chat that probably don't know about my ex-husbands. See, actually, I'm a widow. Three times. The first one, he passed away from eating poison mushrooms. The second one passed away from eating poison mushrooms. The third one passed away from a fractured skull because he wouldn't eat his mushrooms. <laughs> <Ba -dum -bum. laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, I got something fun to share. Well, you go right ahead and do it. Look what I bought myself. Skeletor. <laughs> Don't you take that in the tub with you? Is that one of your tub toys? Don't give me ideas. <laughs> Float this, him around in the bathtub in the bubbles? These are 80s authentic brand new action figures that they just released in 2020. And uh, I got him. So the Dalek is gone. And he's replaced by Skeletor. I, I, everybody has their tub toys and stuff, you know, that they <laughs> that they play with in the bathtub, the rubber duckies and stuff. The funniest story that I ever heard, though, was the fella that was sharing an apartment with a couple other people. And they had to share the bathroom. And when he moved in, the people he moved in with was like you, you know, that everything has to be kept in its own little space. And they had a shelf with little baskets and stuff for each person that they kept all their personal effects in and all this. And and uh, so I, he was a little bit like me, you know, where you get a little laundry. And so he he got a rubber duck and every day he'd have the rubber duck sitting in a different place in the in the bathroom. And every day they'd put it back in his basket, you know. And so, <laughs> so he went and he got a bunch of rubber ducks, <laughs> and he put them all over the bathroom, you know. And then they they got a special basket just for the ducks and put the ducks in a basket, you know, trying to appease him a little bit. And so then he decided to go get a box of ducks, <laughs> and there was ducks every place in the bathroom, and there was no place to put ducks anymore. And they told him, "Now look, <laughs> you're gonna have to cut this out." Because this is taking forever for us to gather up these ducks that you got in the bathroom. And enough ain't things enough. And 
That's it. And he says, well, can I have even just one? And I said, all right, you can have one duck. But that's it. So he went out and he got the biggest duck that he could find. <laughs> like a 30 pound duck. Oh yeah. This great big, huge honk of duck is even too big to put in a bathtub. This, it took up a whole doggone bathroom and then he took that in there and stuck that in the bathroom. And I thought, this is a guy after my own heart. I mean, yeah, that that's the way I do things. There's, there's, there's a phrase he doesn't understand and that's gone too far. <laughs> Oh. Uh, well, you know, if that's all they have to get upset about is uh, the rubber duck in the bathroom, then they need something else to get upset about, you know? <laughs> Luana and Portal just showed up. Howdy to you. Glad you showed up. Glad Did you you're two here. carpool together? You joined at the exact same time. <laughs> we want to know where y'all been and what you've been up to is what we want to know. <laughs> Probably shopping for bandsaws, knowing David. <laughs> Well, I guess there's worse things they could do. Well, if one is good, eight's good enough. <laughs> Everybody's got to have a hobby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's good to have everybody in the house tonight. I'm glad everybody's out there. Does anybody have any uh, odd but true facts that they want to lay on us? Because I, I, I've still got cow facts. I gave you some last week. I got oh. some more. Cool. Desert Bum Woodworkings here. That's Chuck. Hi, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We do odd but true facts here, and if you blow our minds with a fact, then we will give you cowbell rings and virtual tacos. Ain't neither one of them worth anything, but a lot of fun. Your virtual taco will look similar to my physical plush taco. That's his purse. <laughs> my little clutch. <laughs> oh, I won't tell you what he cents? keeps in it. <laughs> I keep my change in here. <laughs> I, he knows what I'm thinking, and he don't want me to say it, but I know what he keeps in there. <laughs> Dave Hart's here. Hi, Dave. Hey, Dave. Good to see you. Glad everybody's with us this evening. He's from my neck of the woods, Central PA. Dave, scream real loud, and I'll listen to see if I can hear you, because he's probably that close. <laughs> well, shoot, I could holler from here. I bet you'd hear me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Your voice echoes off the stratosphere, probably. <laughs> yeah, I have been a bad girl, because just because I don't have any wheels right now does not mean that I have to behave myself. And all my neighbors know it. Oh, boy. Because not having any wheels just, you know, I'm not going to say I get bored because I'm not bored. I always have things to do. So I'm never bored. But it, it makes me think up more stuff to do. <laughs> yeah. C-Dubs Journey's here. Hi, C-Dubs. Hey, C-Dubs. Good to see you. She, she says, it's a fact that little Willie won't go home, can't push Willie around. How's Willie won't go? Hello, Matt and Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Russell out there, he says, grapes explode when you put them in the microwave. Don't ask me how I know this. So do eggs, hard-boiled eggs. Why would you do that? Well, I, I put some hard-boiled eggs in the microwave to warm them up. They were called scotch eggs, where you take the, the hard-boiled egg and you wrap it up in sausage, and then you fry it, and then you slice it down, and it's sausage with egg in the middle of it, right? So I had some left over. I tried to warm them up in the microwave, and, and I forgot all about the fact that, you know, things have to be pierced or they will explode in the microwave. And I was reminded real quick when I blew the door off the microwave and had hard-boiled egg all over the room. <laughs> and I mean all over the room. It was on the ceiling. It was in the carpet. It was everywhere. So, yeah. Not good. We have a fact from Luana. She says, uh, there are more living organisms on the skin of a single human being than there are human beings on the surface of the earth. That's a lot of living organisms. Makes you itch. Yeah, right. <laughs> now everyone's itching, aren't aren't they? 
Uh, but anyway, I, I started to tell you that, you know, I, I think up things to do to keep me occupied and aggravate people. And I have an odd but true fact. Did you know that if you take one of them dog whistles, them, them kind that nobody can hear when you blow them, and you blow that thing like every hour all night long out the back door, that everybody's dog turns into the neighborhood watch. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about nobody's vehicles being touched or anybody's houses being broken into. Nobody's tires get slashed. This The neighborhood has been so safe for the last week since I discovered this. Of course, Crazy. there's not anybody getting any sleep either, but that's beside the point. <laughs> the point is they are not being burgled. There was a um, similar story. A convenience store put a speaker outside and was playing a frequency that only young people could hear to stop them from lord loitering. Well, the young people are smart and figured it out, and then they turned it into an app that they could use on their phone, and they would use the app in some way to get around the teacher hearing what they weren't supposed to hear because the teacher was an older person. And now I forget what the use case was, but whatever they were doing, they were communicating in class with this sound and the teacher couldn't hear it. Isn't that freaky? Oh my. Now on the piano, the last three keys, I, I cannot hear them on the hmm. piano. And this piano is always in tune, obviously, because it's a digital piano and it, yeah. it has perfect perfect tune and um i thought there was something wrong with the piano <laughs> but it's just freak now i can hear them but the, but they're very low mm -hmm. like it's barely even registering and uh yeah so whatever it is those frequencies are like my ears are like not doing it <laughs> huh. and i'm sure they're working I, I just can't hear them it's the strangest thing because it's 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 in your head like it's not a piece of technology it's not like a a volume knob issue it's like yeah. i i cannot perceive that sound at that now, frequency or is there music that uses those three keys no i mean they're they're the top keys on the keyboard they're so i mean no, no song ever really goes up that high oh, i shouldn't okay. say never but you know come on so they're pretty much useless they're pretty much useless but the point <laughs> is i thought my piano was broken my piano's just fine. I, I literally can't hear the top three keys. Uh, and like uh, that's that um, um, Steve Carmichael, he's been playing drums all his life, and he's never worn hearing protection, not even in the shop. Does he? And when he turns on the turn signal in his car, because clink, 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 clink. You know, he can't even hear that. His hearing is foobard. Wow. Foobard. Effed wow. up beyond all recognition. <laughs> Fubard. <laughs> well, Luanna threw us out one. She says, uh, there is a company that will, for $14,000, take your ashes and compress them into a synthetic diamond to be set in jewelry for a loved one. Now, I've seen where you can have your ashes put into like a, a paperweight, you know, those glass ball paperweights that, that mm, they uh, yeah. blow the glass and uh, put pretty colors and stuff with it, and you, your ashes will be forever encased in glass. Okay. Like that. That's cool. Simply Wooden Creations. That's Russell. He says, fact, Utah law strictly forbid any catastrophe, however vague that may be. <laughs> we have a no catastrophe clause in this <laughs> township. <laughs> they are having one heck of a time then here in 2020. Because isn't that what 2020 is all about? One big catastrophe. Woo wee. I think it, 2020 is interchangeable with that F word. <laughs> uh, let's just skip to 2021. <laughs> Luana says, uh, she, she's directing it, this at you. She says, I got my ears checked because I'm losing a touch of hearing exactly in my daughter's range. I laughed out loud. She can hear everyone but her daughter. <laughs> I think that's called selective hearing. <laughs> yeah. Selective hearing. 
yeah, Luanna had heard about the, the paperweight ashes thing. And uh, Anita says that she's seen ashes made into beautiful things too. Gorgeous paperweights. Dave Hart says, I used to work at a recording studio. They had a tone generator that would play a bass sound so low that you can't hear it, but it will make you lose your bowels. That's the brown noise. <laughs> That's what they call the brown noise, yeah. Is uh. that, that similar to what they play in them? Them, uh, I don't even know what they're called in the vehicles, you know, the beat box thing that goes thumping down the street, shaking my pictures off the wall in the house. I saw a YouTube video where the guy was getting fries from McDonald's and they handed the fry, and then he turned up the bass so much it blew the fries out of the back. <laughs> I hate those things, man. I hate them. I want to find some kind of a something similar to like a laser pointer or something that you can point at those vehicles and it actually blows the stereo up in them. No, nah, that doesn't <laughs> exist. Maker 238 Deloach says, I used to install car stereos. That's mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. I had a, a relative that did that. He had a car stereo installation shop. It was cool. One guy I used to work with, he got a Jetta, he, at least a Jetta, and he had this big ass double woofer in the in the trunk. He couldn't, you know, he wanted it louder in the driver's seat, so he he ripped the seat apart, and the seat had like a metal backer, and he he sawed off the metal so the, the sound would go through the back seats. I'm like, you're not going to be able to turn this car in when your lease is up. Well, maybe that's what I ought to do because I'm probably going to end up with a beater, you know, and 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 maybe I ought to do something like that, you know, just get me an old beater and and deck it out with some kind of a boom, boom, fancy boom. stereo <laughs> system thing in it, you know, that bounces me down the road when I go down the road. The tires don't even roll, you know, they just bounce you wherever you need to go. It's like it'll be like a little rabbit hopping along the street, you know. <laughs> you need those hydraulics. Get it so your car goes like this. Yeah. <laughs> and then, ha boom. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. <laughs> I think that's what I need to do. You know, do something like that. Oh, <laughs> that would be badass. <laughs> I could see. <laughs> that, that'd just be right up my alley, you know, something, just something that I would do. You couldn't do that with a nice vehicle. You'd have to do that with a beater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been years since I've had a beater. Uh, and I tell you what, I've had some too. I had this one van that when I would go down the road in this thing, I was like the fourth owner of this vehicle and it had been beat all to hell. And when I go down the road in it, parts would fly off. Oh, no. People were embarrassed all to hell to ride with me because the bases of the fender go, go flying off. There goes the side mirror. <laughs> you know, and I'm just driving along like, you know, I don't notice anything. I'm just driving along. They're like, lug nuts you, are popping off the tire. Do you know, you just lost a pace of your car. I said, oh, well, that's all right. There's still plenty left. And I just keep doing it. Rockin' Woodworks is here. Hi, Eloy. Hey, Eloy. Good to have you. He says Welcome. South Florida is the hottest place on earth. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I, I think of Florida, I, I think of Chris Farley as a weatherman screaming at the Florida on the map, Stop raining! <laughs> It has cooled down just a little bit in Indiana right now. Uh, we had it up there in the high 90s for a while, but it's it's cooled down now. We're in the lower 80s for highs, and it uh, gets in the upper 50s at night, you know, so it's not really pleasant at night and in the early morning. But it's good. Uh, Glad this whew. is starting to break in our favor, the weather. We had one heck of a heat wave going there for a little while. Oh, my, my grass was so brown. Like it was dying. How brown was it? <laughs> so brown, it looked like a river of shit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not good at puns. Mine hasn't turned all the way brown. It, it's a little brittly looking. I was looking at it today when I went out to get the mail. 
And because I was thinking, well, Tony ain't been here in a while to mow the yard. Wonder what the grass looks like. Because, you know, I've been so discombobulated with everything else going on. I hadn't paid much attention to what was going on with the grass. And um, I looked at it and it doesn't need mowed. It's, it's just kind of crumbly. Got it. It's looking here to see if anybody threw us out any more facts. I don't see any more facts. I'll give you one. Uh, give you a cow fact. Now, this is a little long, but it's, I think it's worth the read. Okay. It says cows are surrogate, or, or there are surrogate cows. Transferring embryos from a genetically superior cow to a merely adequate cow is becoming more common. The procedure known as embryo transfer, or ET, involves injecting a superior cow with hormones so she produces multiple eggs. Her eggs then need to be fertilized either naturally or through artificial insemination. When the eggs are fertilized, a vet performs an embryo flush to remove them. That generally results in six to seven usable embryos, but can produce as many as 80 or 90 Holy cow. Without hormone treatment, a cow can only produce one embryo. There are a number of reasons to perform ET. Genetically superior cows produce genetically superior eggs. When they're transferred to surrogates, herds gain more power. Or, try that again. Herds gain more powerful and efficient cows. Instead of the offspring, the surrogates might produce on their own. Embryos are also easily sent overseas to improve the bovine gene pool elsewhere. Simply more and more efficient milk producing cows to countries that lack enough resources to meet demand. There you go. That's crazy. Now, I knew part of that, but I didn't know That's all of it. That's a lot of eggs. Holy my. When, uh, you know, I was raised on a dairy farm and we did the artificial insemination with the, the bulls from these, what they call bull farms. Um, and my dad was big on study and he had these books and he called them his bull books. <laughs> and he studied up on all these bulls in there because different bulls produce different quality calves. And depending upon what you're breeding the bull to, you know, and the cow's quality depends on what kind of calf you're supposed to end up with out of it. So, I knew, you know, that part of it, but I, I did not know about the embryos. That was all new to me. <laughs> so there you go. I hope it blew your mind. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Bish oh, well, Lo Loanna says, like fingerprints, everyone's tongue print is different. Well, with this social distancing, wouldn't you have to keep that to yourself? I would think so. <laughs> Here's a cool one. The whole nine yards, you remember that saying, mm -hmm. comes from World War II fighter planes. The machine gun belts on the planes were 27 feet long. So if you gave someone the whole nine yards, mm -hmm. <laughs> you just unloaded on them. That's right. That's cool. That's good to know. That's right. Got a, <laughs> Yeah. Luana was talking about the, the tongue bridge. She said, wonder how they found that out. Yeah. <laughs> Probably from somebody licking the windows, leaving their tongue prints on the windows. Could you imagine if you got booked? Stick your tongue out, put the ink on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Jim Bashirs is going to be having surgery coming up. You are, Jim. Good luck. I think, I think it's about six weeks, isn't it, Jim? Before you have your surgery done. Come Hope on. that goes well. October the 12th. Now, a week from today is the 35th anniversary of my 29th birthday. <laughs> there you go. All right. That's something that you don't hear people say every day. <laughs> I dare to be different. Happy almost birthday. That's right. Luana says it cost seven million dollars to build the Titanic and twenty million dollars to make a film about it. <laughs> well, the twenty millions was spent in current day dollars. Did you know that every swimming pool on the Titanic is still full of water? <laughs> yeah. 
Now that's a pack that should blow your mind right there. Did you did you hear the story when Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, he he's a uh, famous astrophysicist, more like a celebrity in Hollywood than an astrophysicist, but he is a legit astrophysicist. He he was talking to the director of the Titanic and he said, "You know, I love I love the, the movie, you know, award-winning movie." He says, "But in the scene where they were on the ocean and Rose was looking up at the sky, what they did is they had the star pattern and then they just mirrored the star pattern. Like they didn't have enough of it. <laughs> and he was like, you know, we know exactly where the Titanic was on what date. We know what the sky looked like at that point in time. And James Cameron said to him, the, the, the director, he says, well, you know, the, the movie made $3 billion. <laughs> It sort of gave him what for yeah. and he was he was felt humble he's like oh man i shouldn't have said anything and then years later one of one of the uh director's assistants says we're redoing that the titanic he says uh we're, we're remastering it he says i hear you have a sky for me bitch <laughs> So then Neil deGrasse Tyson was credited for for in the in the remastered version they took out the crappy CGI sky with fake stars that were obviously mirrored you know it was such a you know and then they put in what the sky actually looked like when you know they when it wrapped <laughs> when it went under I thought it was a heartwarming uh -huh. story <laughs> I don't know if it was worthy of sharing Did you like the story people or was I that kind of sappy I thought it was funny Yeah <laughs> I hear you have a sky for me. <laughs> oh. What's the chat saying out there? Oh, uh, Braden's here. Braden's brand reality TV. Hello. Glad to see you. Glad you joined us this evening. She wants to know how everybody's doing tonight. Well, uh, I, I generally say that I am finer than frog hair split six ways with the broad axe. I like I like the long tail cat one. Well, that's when I'm nervous. Okay. I'm, I'm more nervous than a long tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> that's that's the one I like. Did you see the one that I put up there? I think it was yesterday. I put it up on Facebook. My life is falling apart like a hooker's panties on a Saturday night. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. <sighs> yeah, Mark Lindsay's got it right. He says, "I I think if the sky in the movie Titanic ruined it for you, you have uh, entirely too much time on your hand." Well, you, Neil deGrasse Tyson also had a problem with um, some movie. A helicopter was flying through Manhattan and knocked into one of the water tanks on the top, and it it knocked it over and it put out the fire stuff like that but the water tank didn't have the straps on it spaced properly because those straps i don't know if you ever look at it, it's like a, a like a like a gradient because the ones on the bottom are closer together and then they they get spaced out because the water pressure's stronger on the bottom because the weight of all the water and whatever cgi water wood water tower they did it was evenly spaced <laughs> <laughs> something like that ruins a movie for, for someone who knows a lot about science yeah <laughs> crazy i'm a big neil degrasse tyson fan if, if you didn't know My, mark Lindsay says i've always liked hotter than a cat house doorknob on nickel night yeah or hot, <laughs> hotter than a hooker's bed springs on nickel night yeah you go <laughs> <laughs> I stayed in a cheap motel one time and they had a coin thing on the side of the bed and when you put it the bed vibrated. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I thought those didn't exist in real life. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, I've stayed in places like that in the past. It, it was a really big deal like back in the 70s. And we go on vacations. 
that we we go to, you know, because we, you know, big family. Well, I say big. There was four of us. But, you know, when you got a family, you can't afford to stay in the fancy places when, you know, poor to begin with. So we stayed in these cheap motels. And, they, yeah, they'd have the, the vibrating bed <laughs> in the motel room. Portal says, I need those for my motels. Yeah, Portal owns motels. <laughs> I bet he could tell some stories, too. <laughs> Maybe. Well, the cleaning staff probably can. <laughs> and Jim Bashir says his grandpa's favorite was, knock off what you're doing or I'll lock you in the outhouse. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> not on a hot day, it ain't. <laughs> ain't nobody wants to be there on a hot day. Put in a quarter. Turn out the light, magic fingers makes you feel all right. It's a Jimmy <laughs> Buff Buffett song lyric. Nice. Uh, a raisin says the raisin dropped in a glass of fresh champagne will bounce up and down continuously from the bottom of the glass to the top. Hmm. I wonder what scientific principle that's following. Magic, magic jumping raisin. I'll give you another cow fact. The origin of the word cattle stems from the word for personal property. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the origin of cattle is chattel, the Anglo-French word for personal property. Chattel comes from the medieval Latin term capital, and that's spelled C-A-P-I-T-A-L-E. Hmm. Latin. It's everywhere but a forgotten language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they stopped uh, teaching Latin in school when I was a director. I was a elected school director. And like, why teach it? <laughs> it's, it's good for nothing. <laughs> we, we had Spanish. That's the only other language that they taught, and I didn't take it. Uh, I had other things to to take besides that. And I still graduated with more uh, yeah. credits than I needed to graduate. Spanish was hard. I never could really pick it up. It was to, to be good at a, to learning a second language. You have to really understand English, like the sentence structure and the pronouns and the prepositions and the participles. I mean, yeah, I was never very good at English. You know, when you got into all that, yeah. kind of thing to begin with so yeah trying to do that now i did try to learn a little italian at one time but when you don't have anybody to converse with that knows the language and use it on a uh, ongoing basis you forget what you know that sucks yeah let's say we got uh uh Jim, Jim's telling you it's the liquid versus solid grape state paradox, Matt. Hmm. And then uh, Luana says approximately 40,000 Americans are injured by toilets each year. I'm not sure what to con or what to contemplate that too much. I, I know what the problem is. It's it's young boys. I shouldn't even probably say it. <laughs> Potty We're, training. It's yeah. young boys potty training and the lid closing accidentally. Yeah. yeah. If or they if it's not those silent, you know, the the, the whisper closes, mm -hmm. the ones that just go smack. Mm -hmm. That could or, be like a serious injury. Or falling asleep and falling off, cracking your head. Oh well gosh. I hope that doesn't happen. Because I have heard of people doing that. I run in strange circles. <laughs> Fun fact. Uh until 2019, Finnish Radio did a weekly five-minute newscast in Latin. They shut it down in 2019 due to online competition. Hmm. There's, there's no reason to speak Latin in modern society anywhere on the globe. Luana says the Vatican City is the country that drinks the most wine per capita at 74 liters per... Whoops, that moved on me. Uh per citizen per year well vatican city is like all of 12 people so mm -hmm. uh, 
and <laughs> rock and woodworks is there is also the terrible back flush that causes injury <laughs> oh my and brandon's saying that they they like my etsy store they're about to open a store on Etsy, too. Now, I don't have a whole lot in my Etsy store right now. This is what I call the down season. Uh, in the end of September, first part of October, first week, that's when I load it up because I load it up for the holidays. So um, there'll, there'll be a whole lot of stuff going on there in about a month to five weeks. I'll be loading up the, the Etsy store. And getting it ready for the holidays. My soap is up there all the time. So if anybody needs any goat's milk soap, that's the place to get it. It's good for your skin. It'll make you smell good. Get you clean. Get the witch's... What, what's the one with the witch in the... Witch's brew. Witch's brew. Yeah, that one's good. Yeah, there's dragon's blood and witch's brew. And uh, I don't know. There, There's around 75 different scents, I think, of soap that, that I make, so... About all of it is up there on the Etsy store. It's Brenda G's designs. You got to watch the movie Fight Club because the protagonist makes soap. It's it's integral to the story. Hmm. And it's pretty fucked up, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wild ride, that, that show. So, yeah. Uh, Jim Bashirs is telling you that actually the zipper is more dangerous, but there you are. I wouldn't think the zipper bother you much as long as you're not commando. Yeah. Oh, Jim's telling me we don't talk about that. What is it we don't talk about? Commando? I don't know. Oh, uh, oh they say we don't mention the holidays yet, please. I don't don't know if I'm behind for this year or ahead for next year. Well, it's coming whether you like it or not. <laughs> I got news for you. Braden's <laughs> asking me if I love movies. Yeah, I love movies. Movies are fun. Especially movies that don't suck, which there's a lot of movies that suck. Fight Club. The, 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 the director was just on Joe Rogan of Fight Club. Yeah. They talked an hour about the movies. Pretty interesting. Now, I, I haven't watched a whole lot of movies ever. Uh, there, there's a few that I've watched, but not very many. And then Luana says, Soap, do they make it out of human fat? They did in Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> that that was Tyler Durgan's F you to the world. He would take these pretentious women who would get liposuction to look with because their vanity was off the charts. Mm -hmm. And then he would make soap out of their fat and sell it back to them. <laughs> he got an internal laugh out of that. Yep. Of course, he was a psychopath, too. So, yeah. you know, there's that. Well, fat is fat, you know, and, and... <laughs> it's just. How do you think of that? Like, what? <laughs> How does your um, mind have to be wired in order to come up with that one, huh? <laughs> it's, it's a sad state of affairs, but it made for a hell of a movie, I'll tell you that much. <clears throat> I never saw Fight Club and still came up with that thought. Scares me. Luana, that was like legit part of the movie. <laughs> People, stop talking about Fight Club. Yeah, first rule of Fight Club is don't talk about Fight Club. Second rule of a Fight Club is don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> uh, and Mark Lindsay wants to stop talking about the holidays. They're coming. They're coming, and they're coming with a vengeance. And as a matter of fact, you should be delighted to see them come because that pretty much means that we're going to be saying goodbye to this year. And I don't know about you, but I want to see this year go away. <laughs> I want to show you something on my iPad. I've had about all the 2020 I can take. <laughs> Look what song that they made. They made me learn on the iPad. See that? Whoops. Ah, you're hitting buttons. I know. Getting sliders. Right there. That one. What's it say? I can't read it. Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> ah, Okay. Oh look! Look! Look at this! What I'm I'm doing? Uh, the Adams family. See the Adams yeah. family? Yeah. That is a hard song. <laughs> it is so fast. Do 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 It's it's tough. It's tough. Your hands slide all over the place. It's oh man! It's it's a hard song. Where's the off button? Oh, there it is. 
And Nada says that the holidays always come with a vengeance. <laughs> Lord, but, yeah, my, uh, oh my God. So, God love my wife. She she does this elfster with her side of the family. So, it's a uh, secret Santa. Mm -hmm. So, instead of buying presents for every one of the relatives, you just buy for one. Mm -hmm. But some of the relatives don't have email, and it's an online app, and it's like, it's always, it's so much drama. I'm just like, how can it be 2020 and you don't know how to use email? Like, that is not an excuse for any living, breathing person should be able to use. Email was around in the late 80s, for God's sakes. <laughs> I didn't know how to use it until, uh, I think it was around 96, when I started getting around computers. It's and such a hardship because the, the way they had to solve it was the one relative, because you can rank what you want, and the, and the one relative had double the amount of choices, but everything that, that was ranked one and two was the one, and everything that was ranked three and four was the other, and then the one who couldn't use email was all blank. I'm just like, life's too short. I'm just like... <laughs> I'm like, we're, we're not using this app next time. Well, it's so convenient. Yeah, but not for the person that has to jerry, rank, jerry rig. I'm just like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Everything's canceled. Christmas is canceled. <laughs> the boy's going to be 21 years old. He don't believe in Santa Claus anymore. <laughs> but then, you, you know, you, you, th look at it this way. You could be like me, and there's no family, mm. you know. So, uh, and that that has its pluses and its minuses, yeah. you know, because you don't have a whole lot of people to buy for, and you don't have to put up with a bunch of relatives fussing and fighting and carrying on and all that. But there again, there ain't nobody around. So, you know. Look what Portal Woodwork says. Portal says, my father is 81, and he doesn't know what email is. My father is 82, and he emails like a boss. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's like the last the last stress you want on the holiday is tech help over email. It can't you. Oh, my God. Well, I forget what my password is. You set email once, and you never you put in the password the first time, and you never have to put it in the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, making me nuts. Making but me you'll nuts. miss them when they're gone now. <laughs> yeah. You don't think you will, but you will. You'll miss them when they're gone. You'll be telling these stories about, well, I couldn't believe that they didn't know how to use the email. Bless their hearts. Oh, my goodness. I wish they'd still around. I'd show them how to use that email. People <laughs> in the Amazonian jungle might not know either, maybe. <laughs> Oh, I tell you, you know, sometimes we can get too technical for our own good, though. Yeah, they they got a lot of the vehicles now so that they're uh, computerized everything. And I got to be honest, being an old schooler, that kind of bothers me because I think, you know, you get in one of them vehicles and it gets you out in the middle of someplace and decides that it's just going to lock the doors and lock you inside and turn off the air conditioning on a hot day and tell you you're here to die. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it used to be, you know, is it getting gas? Is it getting air mm -hmm. and spark? Yep. That was it. That's all you needed to know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now it's what's what's this error code and the computer needs reflashed and yep. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it gets something wrong with that computer, man. You're screwed. <laughs> yeah, I guess my point. Your whole vehicle. Uh, there's a lot of chatter in, in the chat room. My point wasn't that everyone does know how to use email it's that everyone should know how to use email i believe there's pockets of people that don't know how to use email but come on come on <laughs> luann is saying festivus for the rest of us <laughs> oh, i'm all in on festivus <laughs> and anita said uh, that's where you buy gifts and a person can pick a gift, and if they don't like what they get, they pass that gift off to someone else and pick another gift. You keep going around that way and, until all the 
gifts are gone. And we, we used to do that in my husband's family years ago. And they used to fight over the stuff that I would take, mm. you know, because there, there was three of us, me and my husband and my stepson. So I'd make up these gift baskets of stuff that I had made. So there wasn't a lot of money in them because, you know, we were supposed to keep the price down on this stuff that you took. So I'd take these gift baskets and, you know, it might be some of my homemade jelly and some homemade Christmas <laughs> ornaments and, and stuff like that. They're, you know, just things that, uh, that I thought everybody would enjoy. And they got so that they would actually fight over the, <laughs> the baskets that I took. Man. <laughs> But they would not let me bring anything I cooked for the meal. Because one time I took some barbecued rabbit in the crock pot. And when, uh -oh. they, when they figured out that it was barbecued rabbit after they'd been chowing down on it for about an hour, they, <laughs> they said, it's what? And I said, it's barbecued rabbit. And I, oh, I can't believe you did that test. And I said, well, you've been chowing down on it for about an hour. It looked like you enjoyed it pretty good. You ain't bringing nothing to the family. <laughs> cook, cook out things again. Never. And then I'd ask him, what, what do you want me to bring for, to the thing on Sunday? Nothing. You bring nothing. <laughs> so I guess I found a way that I didn't have to cook when I went to the family gatherings, but. <laughs> my, my my friend got the wrath of all of us because we were deciding what to bring. He says, and he says, oh, we should get a case of lager. He says, I'll bring the lager. Here he started dabbling in home brewing, like in the buckets. He made his own freaking lager and brought here. Here everyone thought we were getting Yingling lager, like mm -hmm. like civilized, you know, people. <laughs> oh. I think we kicked him out. We're like, get the fuck out. Well, I think some of that homemade stuff is better than some of the stuff you buy in the store. But not, not some novice with a powder, you know, bat. You know, it was, it wasn't high end. It was, it was not micro. He thought he was like a micro brewer. Well, I made some uh, uh, crab apple wine that tasted just like Southern Comfort once. Ooh. That was some good, easy going down stuff. Right Soco, there. baby. Yeah. I could put a hurting on that. You couldn't tell the difference. You got to be careful because there's it comes in two different, you know, has eighty proof and then it it's higher than eighty, like one hundred and twenty proof. Oh, this that, would put you under the table. Yeah, oh baby, <laughs> it's some good stuff. That was back when I was on the farm and had a couple crab apple trees out there, and so I had plenty of crab apples to make use of. Oh no, Mark Lindsay says. uh, my family thinks my wife makes the greatest pumpkin pie in the world. Only my youngest daughter knows she's been making sweet potato pie for the last 20 years. Two decades. Oh. Now, for me, the best pumpkin pie is where you squeeze your own pumpkins. You know, pe people think that it, you got to go to the store and get the pumpkin in the can. Mm. That, that's not even real pumpkin. That, that's squash. Oh but yeah. You go get a pumpkin and you clean it out and you slice it down and you put it in the oven and let it get soft so that you can take it out of the shell real easy, you know, and then you put it through the processor and make your own pumpkin puree out of it. Um that now there is some good pumpkin for some pumpkin pies right there. Gotcha. See the thing about pumpkins is you you can't mess them up if you're trying to grow them. They grow like weeds. Yeah. And I buried a pumpkin. And <laughs> my God. Uh huh. Was there an explosion next season? <laughs> yeah. Cause all them seeds germinate. It went everywhere. Yeah. And the leaves are bigger than your face. It's mm -hmm. a, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But I always called it home squeezed pumpkin pie. You know, somebody asks you, do you want a piece of pie? I says, is it home squeezed? Did you squeeze your own pumpkin for that pumpkin pie, or did you Damn. buy it in a can from the store? The Dairy Queen will have pumpkin pie blizzards. Yeah. Yeah, around October, of course. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, that's coming up before we know it. Oh, I know. Because we, we are rapidly approaching the end of August right now. I know because next week is the 35th anniversary of my 29th birthday. I don't think I mentioned that. <laughs> yes, you did. 
<laughs> well, when you get that's, my age, the memory's the first thing to go. That's <laughs> is that the 29th or the 27th? 27th, next Thursday. 27th, the day before my dog's birthday. Yeah. Dog's birthday is 20. My dog's birthday is Sunday, the 23rd. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're sisters, and they, they're from the same litter, Aww. and they share a birthday on, on Sunday. Sweet babies. Well, sometimes. So they Australia, have their moments. Australian shepherds, right? Yeah. They do have their moments. Oh, you, the Australian shepherd that my sister-in-law owns, you know, it's... Mm -hmm. a young adult now mm -hmm. still acts like a baby oh, yeah. goes up in your lap i mean big dog just, whoop, up on your lap yeah so yeah. lovable they'll be both of mine's gonna be 10 years old on sunday and they don't show it they don't act it they still think they're pups oh and they, they run rings around you you got to be careful that they don't trip you you know because they're doing laps around the room <laughs> oh she's on her feet watch us go we're gonna hurt her now because we're australian shepherds watch us go and they need numbers on their back and you need to bet on them <laughs> coming around the inside <laughs> You trip me, we're all going down and there'll be hell to pay. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, maker 238 Deloach has to go. Thanks for stopping by. Well, we're glad you joined us. I hope you had a good time listening to the foolishness that we, we do here. Drop a Thursday like evening. on your way out. <laughs> Please. And I will mention that Russell from Simply Wooden Creations has a show on Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And we hope everybody will join us. I'm I'm on the panel. Sometimes Matt's on the panel. If he don't have weddings or, you know, some, some kind of a dude that he's got to go to, uh, he'll join the panel with us. And we cut up and have a good time there. And sometimes we have guests and sometimes we don't. And you never know what we're liable to pull over there. We'd love to pull things on poor old Russell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was at a wedding on Saturday. It was fun. It was, out, it was outside it was in the country club. Very nice. Open bar, which is a prerequisite. Mm -hmm. Don't any of you mother effers invite me to your wedding if it's not open bar. You're going to get a no <laughs> response from me. It <laughs> needs to be open bar. That was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of fun. Russell's got the uh, palette challenge going on right now through the end of August. So if you get yourself a wooden palette and go over there on his uh, website, and take a look at the rules and stuff. You can make something out of a palette and enter the contest. Well, I, you know, if, if Russ is still here, I have a question about the palette challenge. Okay. Russell, make yourself known there in the chat. We'll ask you a question. So this, this, is, this is what I made. It's soundproofing. And this is a palette. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's a hardwood backer. And this is all towel material. And one of the rules is it's got to be mostly made out of pallet. Well, that may not qualify. I, like, is I, I can't tell what the percentage is if that if that would count or not. So I was going to submit that as my entry, but I think I might be out of compliance. Now I've got something I can make out of a pallet, and I've got a pallet. The problem is I ain't got no time. Well, that's required. Because every time I think I might have five minutes to do something. Uh, the, the messenger goes off, the email goes off, the texture goes off. The, the, the Lord have mercy. I, I can lend you Skeletor and he can smite your enemies. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, when all this stuff goes on, then I do get something productive made out of it, you know. But I, yeah. it's not what I intended to do with my time on that day. <laughs> I mean, I had plans today to get a whole bunch of stuff done. I had a list. And what? Uh, he, here's my motto. I make plans and God laughs. Because <laughs> whatever my plans are, it is not going to work out. God has another way that he's going to make that day go. I think he waits for me to actually sit down and make the list. <laughs> He, he he gets a message on his phone. She's <laughs> making a list. Brenda's active. <laughs> and God says, "Watch this." Oh, so yeah, you know, I had plans this morning. I had this list all made out of these things that I was going to do. Great things was going to happen today. Oh Lord.
Lord have mercy. It, <laughs> So it may have to wait till next year before I can get the pellet challenge done. But I have something that I want to make out of a pellet. And, you know, it is what it is. And we got uh, Jim Docker. I don't think that we recognize my brother from another mother. Oh, and, hi, Jim. Uh, Jimbo is out there. We're glad to see Jimbo with us this evening. And, it, and B Lady's out there. Hello, B Lady. This is her first time here. Well, I'm glad you dropped in. Welcome to the stream. We do this every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And next week, with any luck at all, Brenda will have wheels back again, and we'll start back in with the giveaways on Thursday night. Woohoo! Hi, B-Lady. Good to meet you. Without wheels, I can't get to the post office. So hopefully next week I'll have some wheels underneath me again, and we will be doing the the uh, giveaways that... We were doing before all this debacle in my life happened. A and, bee lady came from Twitch or ori originally found you on Twitch. That's well, cool. I met her here on YouTube and then uh, we both went over to Twitch and was doing shows over on Twitch. And I think she's still doing some over on Twitch. I don't do them over there anymore, but uh, uh, yeah, I've known her for quite some time now. She, very she, cool. She's into bees. That's why they call her the bee lady. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm I'm into hexagons, and uh, <laughs> bees make make hexagons. <laughs> for for the new people here that don't know Matt, Matt has about uh, what is it twenty thirty channels now on YouTube that you got. I've got quite a few YouTube channels, but uh, the two main ones I have are awesome, awesome wood things, things, and then this all things YouTube. All things is... YouTube, and he's got piano awesome and awesome fun things and. And awesome pumpkin spice and uh, mind uh, was blown. Matt's new Hooters and I don't know what all he's got. He's got a bunch of them, and yeah, that, uh, that's my only fans. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can find him on Monday nights uh, with his uh, All Things YouTube show that he does, where he tells us about what YouTube's come up with new for us. And Jim Docker's got a fact. He says. We accept an offer for our house for more money than anything has ever sold for in the neighborhood. Whoa, good on you. Congratulations. I like when good things happen to good people. That's great. So happy for you that that happened for you. Oh, B. Lee says, Matt, what's your channel name? Well, all things YouTube. I think we're behind time. And awesome wood things. And if you want to watch me play the piano, it's Piano Awesome. <laughs> yeah, all, all Things YouTube is his Monday night channel uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time where he tells us whatever's going on new with the YouTube. Because he's big friends with that Susan Zelinsky or whatever her name is there. YouTube. They, they, they like to get together and have wine and and tell stories. And I am no friend of Susan, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Don't but let I him kid you. <laughs> I do know employees over in the Google Books division. If that means anything to you, which it doesn't, but I mean, hey. Mark says, I do well over here on YouTube. That's where I stay. Good on you, Mark. Well, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to experiment a little bit if you want to see what's going on in the other realms. I, I went over to Twitch for a little bit, and, well, as it turned out, I wasn't getting no audience over there, and I didn't feel like, you know, killing myself trying to get an audience in two spots. So I just come back to YouTube and stayed over here. And uh, uh, B-Lady is asking about the halo on your head. And I think she's talking about your green lights there around your door. Make yep. it kind of look like a halo back there. Kind of. Hey, he's got he's got all kinds of lights and bells and whistles and and... Lord. Stuffed animals. I got Yoshi right here. Yoshi. I got my piano beaver. Over in the corner, you can't see it. It's obscured by this. I have a uh, Donkey Kong. I don't know if you can see Donkey Kong over there. Everybody likes to look at Matt's beaver, but nobody likes to see my monkey. <laughs> and the, the beaver has her own light. Look. Yep. Hey, and, he and he the lights their beaver up. The control panel, look what it says on the back. Beaver light. <laughs> beaver light. <laughs> it's 
It's, it's legitimately what it is. It's my beaver light. Yeah, it's my beaver light. Ah, oh. Anita says, "I'm glad you came back to YouTube. We got to know each other." Yep. Uh, you know, I've had other people try to talk me into to go in different spots and doing different things. You know, I guess there's some other things going out there now that they like to to go to and. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy right here doing what I'm doing. I wish I could do more of what I'm doing. If I could get life to leave me alone for a little while and let me get back to what I was doing. Cause I was doing real good raising subscribers up on the channel and, and doing things. And then I got sick and I know more than got well than, than the saw thieves come to my, <laughs> to my driveway and attack my poor little van and, Lord have mercy. So, you know, hopefully things will settle down here for long. 2020, you know, can go away. I'm tired of it. Well, hopefully it'll be over soon. With any luck at all. Jim Docker wanted to know if I spanked my monkey. There you go. I'm spanking my monkey. Oh, I think <laughs> the bee lady found the other. Um, oh, there's, there's, there's more than one all things youtube out there mine is obviously the one with the green the green coloring yeah his is the big greeny uh let me go to my channel i'll, I'll drop a link and we'll do uh see question. right there behind him on his screen it shows the all things well it did show it now it's now it's on mind equals below but it's big green logo there you go. I put it in the chat. That's all things YouTube. Okay. Yeah, B Lady said, uh, did you say settle down? I hope so. Maybe after November. That's what I'm thinking, too. I think maybe a lot of this will will subside if we can just make it that long and, and live through it. But, I mean, you know, we, we have our normal daily stuff that we have to deal with, even in a year that doesn't have all the craziness that this year has had. So, you... you Put them all together, and I about lost my mind. <laughs> I didn't have much of it to begin with. I put all my 27 channels in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> B-Lady says, uh, Matt, I have it, and she subbed, okay? I'll get you back. Thank you, the B-Lady. Apiary. Apiary? Oh, that's right. That's what, they, that's what they're called. Cool. Mm -hmm. 9992. Nine, 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 two. Let me see here. There we go. Here, let me uh, share the screen. Do you want to put my screen up? Well, you don't have it down here for me to put well, up. Well, that, my guy, give me a second. <laughs> well, don't ask me to put it up for you. Put it there for me to put up. <laughs> All right. We'll get that a big old subscribe going. Oh, your uh, sub count is obscured. You have hidden your sub count, which is fine. You know, uh, Anita uh, said that she added your other channels as well. Woohoo! Much appreciated. Oh, and I will mention now, too, if you look in the description of our live streams, it tells you that there are two URLs you can go to. And the first one is a URL for a little form you can fill out. And then all you put on there is your channel name and the URL for your channel. That automatically goes onto the second URL for you, which is the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet has everybody's channels listed with hyperlinks so that you can click on the link and go to folks' channels and check them out. Since we can't do that from the chat anymore by hitting those three little dots on somebody's chat message, now we've got a spreadsheet here where you can go and check people's channels out and see what their channels are all about. So do you want to there, share again? There you go. You know, you, you can go to that first one and leave your information. The second one there has that spreadsheet. Now you can't change anything on the spreadsheet that that is a read only, but you can't click it to go to people's channels and, and check out their channels. So you're welcome to list all your channels. You're welcome to tell your friends about it and, 
get as many on here as we can get. You can start at the top and go the whole way down. Yep. (laughs) Yep. Work your way through. And I'm not asking you to subscribe to all of them. I'm just saying if you find something there you like and you want to support their channel, you can do so that way. Um, You know, not everybody's channel is for everybody. You know, some people, some people like gaming, some don't. You know, some people like crafting, some don't. Um, but if you find something there that you're interested in and want to support them, there you go. And then B Lady says, Matt, no computer expert here. Trust me, I've been monetized. Just found super chat button after maybe four months. Wow. <laughs> we we what none of us born knowing how to do YouTube. Oh, hey, my moderator is in the house. Boycott Matt Haas. <laughs> Everyone say hi to Boycott Matt Haas. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad to have you with us. Lady B's Urban Stead is here. Hello. Good to see you, Lady B. Welcome. She said she just got home and saw we were live, so here she is. Welcome to you. You're always welcome here. And B Lady wants you to tell her how to turn on her sub count. I will tell you. Um, I got to get his page up there so he can walk you right through it. Yeah. Isn't that in the privacy settings, Matt? I think it's under channel advanced settings. Yeah. Okay. So I'm ready to share. Okay. And give me a second. Sorry. (laughs) There we go. All right. So. What you'll do is you come to your dashboard, your YouTube studio, you know, you go, you pick YouTube studio from this drop down list. Now I've already on YouTube studio. Then you go to settings down here at the bottom and within settings, you go to channel and within channel, you go to advanced. Now, this is a scroll. It doesn't look like a scroll, but see how it's scrolling down? And this is it. Display the number of people subscribed to my channel. You have this checkbox unchecked. You want to check it. If you want to display your yeah. sub count. And then, see, when you're when I'm back here on your channel, you don't have the sub count. But if I go to my channel, underneath, see how it says right here? 308 subscribers. Anyway. So that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Is that clear to you? Or do you need him to tell you again? Because sometimes I got to hear something three or four times before it sinks in. As as a a benefit to you, you might want to apply for membership to the um, All Things YouTube group. So this is the All Things YouTube Facebook group. And you can ask questions like this in here. And myself and the other very smart people in that group will answer you for free. It's absolutely for free. All Things YouTube group on Facebook. Optional, if you're into that type of thing. But yeah, I'm happy to help. I love answering YouTube questions. Anyone can ask me any YouTube question or any other question. I know... A lot of things about a lot of things. I've asked him a lot of questions. Some of them didn't have nothing to do with YouTube. Yeah. You know, I'm business consulting, um, woodworking, tools, science stuff. (laughs) Sometimes he don't know the answers. Yeah, sometimes I don't. And sometimes that's fun to hear him not know the answer. (laughs) I've never claimed that I knew all the answers, but I'm happy to share what I know. Stump the hoss. (laughs) <laughs> maybe that's what we ought to do on here some night we we ought to play stump the hoss see how many questions we can ask you that you can't answer <laughs> i don't know how entertaining that would be because <laughs> well i might find it extremely entertaining now you on the other hand might I've have never an issue claim with... to know everything i'm not as smart as mark Lindsay. <laughs> I don't know is a legit answer, says Mark Lindsay. See how (laughs) smart he is? (laughs) Uh, Oh, gosh. Well, yeah, you know, 
there's a lot of questions out there to be answered and and you can't know the answers to all of them it would be a dull dull life if you had to answer to everything i mean with me i have an obsessive personality when i when i get attached to something I, I learn everything there is to know about it you know i just started to learn piano now i'm all enthralled in that computer programming i know that obsessive personality Design. really i don't think any of us believe that well my personality is good at ignoring things i'm not interested <laughs> in i'll shut that stuff out like nobody's <laughs> business but once i start attaching myself to something Okay, B Lady says that she is still looking for that sub count thing. Oh. So walk her through it one more time. She uh. goes to her, her creator studio. And on the left hand menu, at the bottom of that menu is a thing that says settings. Okay, here's here's step by step. So um this is not YouTube. Go to YouTube. So here you are on YouTube. You want to go here and go to YouTube Studio. Okay, go up on the upper right and that little thumbnail part. Yeah, your and, little avatar. And that YouTube drops studio. down a menu where you can go to the YouTube studio. You click on the YouTube studio, and that takes you to your studio. And at the bottom of the left-hand column down there, there's a thing that says settings on it. And you click on that settings button. Then the menu pops up, and you go to channel. Channel, and then advanced. So you go to the channel on the right-hand side, and then up there at the top, you go to the Advanced tab. But Advanced, you have to scroll down. That's see, It's hidden. You can't see the checkbox. You have to scroll down, and it says Subscriber Count, and there's a checkbox. Check the checkbox. And then hit Save. You have to hit Save when you're done. Okay, she says she got it. All right. Woo-hoo! So you like, that's why I say sometimes you got to walk through things two or three times with me because uh, yeah. it goes kind of fast. And if I can't find the buttons right away, then, you know, you've moved on five or six steps ahead. And I'm like, OK, now what the hell is he talking about now? <laughs> I'm still, still back here trying to find the studio for crying out loud. <laughs> oh, the, uh, there it is. Three thousand four hundred and. Wow, 3.41 thousand subscribers. That you, yeah. you definitely did it. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, she agrees with me. She says, yeah, two, two to four times you got to go through things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're, see, we're we're older folks. You know, the younger people know all this computer thing, and they can just zip through this, that, and the other thing, and and just find it. Bam, they're there. Well, and, I, you know, I've I've not I'm not only a tech expert, I'm also a and former instructor, so I, I'm, I, I speak geek to English translation perfectly. <laughs> yeah, but you do it so fast. Well, see, while true. we're being overwhelmed by the sheer broadness of the whole thing, yeah, <laughs> you are moving through screens, and we're like, what did you say to do first? See, Luana has it there. She goes, you can, you can hit the rewind button is what she said. Yeah. Well, you can, or it depends. I mean, you can on this, but, you know, sometimes I'll be asking him something over the phone, or, you know, and, and he'll say, you do this, then you do that, and then you do this, and then you do that, and then you click this, and then you click that, and make sure you do this, make sure you do that. And I'm still back at the very first step yeah. saying, huh? <laughs> Mark Lindsay says, heck, I still have Roman numerals on my watch. <laughs> yeah, and B Lady says, yeah, yeah, but they don't know our wisdom exactly. No. Exactly. Well, I mean, you know, I have had chats with younger people about the the good old days, you know, where there's things that they don't know nothing about. I mean, you know, most of them have never had to use an outhouse. Most of them have never used a ringer washing machine and know how to, to wash their clothes with a ringer washer. A lot of them have never had to hang clothes out on a clothesline to dry. Uh, and they, they don't know how to skin a rabbit or pluck a chicken or any of that kind of stuff, you know. And, and these are old-timey things that <laughs> I'm here to tell you, you may have to know how to do some of that stuff before it's all said and done. And mm -hmm. the old folks that you've been shaking your finger at saying, you need to know more about technology. You know, we're saying you need to know more about how in the world to survive. 
if the world blows up in your face. <laughs> when society collapses, people are going to be knocking on Brenda's door. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Because, you know, that some of these old-timey things are worth knowing. I am extremely grateful that I had a granny that went through the Depression with seven children. And she taught me lots of stuff that you hope you never need to know. But it's always good to know it. And then B-Lady says, amen, we have a two-seat outhouse here on our small farm. Yep. I, you know, I, I was very grateful when I was three years old that we moved to a farm that had an inside bathroom in it. And I will never forget it. When, when we first went out there and took a look at that farmhouse, I jumped up and down that we are buying this house <laughs> at three years old. I said, we're buying the house. And <laughs> daddy's like, well, why do you like the house so good? I said, it's got an indoor bathroom. Can't argue with that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. B lady says chamber pots, rain barrels. Yep. And she makes soap too. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now Luanna says old age and treachery will always overcome youth and, and enthusiasm. However, enthusiasm is underrated. Severely underrated. I didn't say overrated. I said underrated. Yeah. You can solve a lot of problems with enthusiasm. It's true. Yep. Bay lady says, so crochet, knit, embroidery. I'd add weaving to that because um, I, I do that too. I build my own looms. Um, I spin my own wool. You know, I, I'm, I'm big into the fiber crafts as well as a lot of other crafts. I mean, you name it, I, I pretty much do it. The only the only craft I'm really not into is stained glass. I just never had a compensatory for, for doing stained glass. It's beautiful, and I, I don't mind owning it. But I, as far as a craft, I don't do stained glass. <clears throat> but I do about everything else, so I figure that makes up for it. <laughs> if you're not into it, you're not into it. Yep, I figure I, I do so much other stuff, you know, how can you miss that just that one thing, you know? Ain't no uh, thing. Yeah, she said she never learned to weave, spin, or tat. Yeah, I, I do all three of them. They teach their own. And That's Jim what Doc life's all about, finding happiness. Yeah. Jim Dockerel says, uh, but I tried to explain algebra to, to a bear, and it died of boredom. <laughs> <sighs> Mark Lindsay says, my wife brought home another spinning wheel and a four harness counterbalance loom yesterday that makes and even 24 spinning wheels that he has to work on oh no mark now i never collected wheels i i have one really nice wheel that i had custom made for me uh it's a lehigh valley but i do collect drop spindles and i have several vases or vases full of drop spindles so there is that hmm. i have them made out of wood and glass and all kinds of different materials because they're nice. small you know they're they're easily collected <laughs> they don't take up a whole lot of room that's a good type of collection yeah now, you're going to go to collecting them little figurines for your bathtub, ain't you? <laughs> well, I, I've got Man of War on order. And I, um, or Man at Arms, I'm sorry. Man at Arms is the other one. I got him on order. And then if I find He-Man, I'll buy He-Man. And that's all I'm doing. I'm not buying anymore. I just wanted him for the background. Now, you going to get a rubber duck that, that they can ride on around in the bathtub when you take them in there? No, no. He's too busy being evil and smiting his enemies to worry about bathing. You need uh, you need one of them big rubber ducks. <laughs> when I when I heard that story, I thought, now there's a fellow after my own heart because that's the kind of thing that I would do. He, you know, when he said, I knew what he was going to do as soon as he said, "You mean I can't even have one?" I knew exactly what he was going to do. Dave Hart has a good idea. 
They're going to put you in the sheep to shawl competition at the farm show in central Pennsylvania. I have never competed in a sheep to shawl, but I could. I definitely could because I know how to do all that kind of stuff. You know, the, from sheep to shawl, that's where they shear the sheep and they card the wool and they spin the wool and they ply the wool and then they they uh, put it on the, the loom and they make a shawl out of it. It goes from the sheep to the shawl. So it's literally sheep to shawl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I wonder what that means. But oh, there you go. You yeah. just explained it. And it, it's a team effort. There's there's a whole bunch of ladies in each team, and oh, and dear uh, Lord. yeah. So you got one shearing, and you got one carding, and you got one spinning, and and you got one plying. As soon as the spinning, you know, they get a couple couple spools of of yarn, then somebody else is plying it, and then somebody is waiting for that plied wool. So that they can put it on the loom and go to weaving with it. Yep. Mark's wife knits, weaves, you name it, he yep. says. Yep. Those they are have all three hours to finish, says Dave Hart, for the yep. competition. Yep. Those are all good things to know how to do. Uh, and I, I have talked and talked for years to, uh, to young people about you need to learn how to do some of these things. Find yourself a class or get on the internet, on YouTube, play you some videos, learn how to do things you don't know how to do because those qualities and skills can be invaluable to you in the future. They're saying before the apocalypse to download survival app to your phone and download a first aid app mm -hmm. to your phone so you'll have the knowledge mm -hmm. at least until your batteries run yeah. out <laughs> yeah and it, it doesn't hurt to have a solar hookup for your phone i've got mm. a solar hookup for my phone in case the the power goes out to the point where you can't charge the phone anymore at least you know if you got a little sunshine you can get a charge going on that phone but yeah there's, there's you need to think of if if it happens what would i need what is it that I use today that I wouldn't have then? And how do I get around that? How do I cook? You know, do I have a fire ring that I can put out, throw some wood in it and be able to cook? Do I have any uh, utensils that I can use, any iron skillets and iron pots and, and that sort of thing where at least I'll be able to cook? Do oh. I have a filter for water? Will I be able to filter my own water? I want one of those... Uh... You make it out of square metal tubing, and it's a gravity-fed furnace mm -hmm. where it's it's basically a straight tube like this and then a, another tube like that, and you put the sticks in, and the sticks gravity, as they burn, you know, they, they keep mm -hmm. falling in, yep. and then the fire go, just goes straight up, and then you can put a pan or a pot on top of it, and it'll boil water like that just with twigs. Mm -hmm. You just need little tiny twigs. Yep. Hotter than hotter than you know, burn the skin right off you. Yep. Their rocket stove is what they're called. Mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, the next time I get around someone with a uh, welder, TIG welder or, or any type of welder, that's what I want to do. I want to get. I want to put just put it on a chop saw, cut it off at an angle, and grind out the hole for it. And then you, you got to put a little air at the bottom so the air can can go up. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. Yep. And then sometimes they rig things at the top where you can put a pan on it and it doesn't mm -hmm. choke it. You know, right. it's like up off an inch and a half or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those things are cool. They're yeah. cool. Yeah. Like you can find a couple sticks laying around easy peasy. You don't have to go chop down trees. That's you right. can just like pick them off the ground and you yeah. can, yeah, heat your water. I'd yeah. love to make one of those. It'd be a fun project. Easy too. Couple, mm -hmm. couple, couple alterations of the of the metal and just mm -hmm. yeah, easy. Yep. There's there's lots of skills and oh. stuff, and, and they need to learn how to barter. You know how how to trade things and have a yeah. few. If you have a, I'm, you, it doesn't take a whole lot of money. I mean, you can go to the dollar store, or the Dollar Tree, or someplace, uh, and. Here's one that a lot of people don't know, but the the dollar general dollar store has a penny sale. And a lot of people don't know about it, but every Tuesday morning, 
there's a bunch of stuff that they're supposed to have off the shelves and they don't always get it off the shelves. Now, there's a list every Tuesday of the stuff that's supposed to be off the shelves. And if it's still on the shelves, it's going to ring up for a penny. Hmm. And you can go to the dollar store. You can buy socks. You can buy makeup. You can buy candy. The, you, there's food on the shelves, the jerky, you know, different things that you can get from the, the dollar general store for a penny on penny day. You can't ask. You're never, ever, ever supposed to ask the clerks about the penny sale. Mm. This is, and there's an app you can get on your phone that you can scan the items to be sure that it's the ones that they've got advertised. But you can get stuff for a penny and keep it in a box in, in your closet for bartering. You know, if, if you've got some extra socks and somebody else has some extra lighters and you need a lighter and they could use some socks, you can do some bartering. And sure. if you got it at the penny sale... You know, you've paid a penny for it, for crying out loud. You're not really out anything now, are you? It's a good way of looking at it. V-Lady says, I follow a channel who keeps us up to date on Dollar General. Yep. There are several channels on YouTube that talks about it. It's a lot of Dollar Generals now. They're popping yep. up everywhere. Mark Lindsay says, so far I've refurbished a, and sold given away six spinning wheels people have given her. I still have 13 wheels to refurbish, but I'll get them all done eventually. Well, yeah. <laughs> Mark, you got the right attitude, brother. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It takes a little bit of um, practice to learn how to spin. I, I can remember how awkward it was for me when I first learned how, but one, it's like riding a bike. Once you learn how, it's great. And it's so relaxing. Now, I will fall asleep at the spinning wheel. You know, because you got your foot on that treadle and mm. you, you, know, you got that easy, nice motion and, and you're pulling at <laughs> the wool, you know, letting the, the wheel pull the wool and, and you're just kind of rocking back and forth. And next thing you know, your eyes are closed. You're dosing off and about to fall out of the chair. Oh, <laughs> you're making me tired. It's very relaxing. We've been going for an hour and a half, Brenda. We have. Yep. Well, Lord, when you're having fun, see, mm -hmm. that's what happens to you. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess then we need to get off of here and let everybody go have their dinner or whatever they're going to do. It's been uh, fun tonight talking sure. to everybody. It's Always been, a good time. Look forward to Thursday nights. Been a lot more fun than some of the stuff I've been going through here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> good to get your mind off of it. <laughs> I'd say uh, B Lady wants to know, where do you get your wool from? There are several lists on the internet. Now, used to, when I was on the farm, I had my own sheep. That made it pretty simple. But now that I've moved to town, I don't have my own sheep. But there are several lists on Facebook where they sell wool. Um, so, you, you know, you can do some searching there uh, on the, the Facebook groups for wool sales and uh, spinning lists and all that. And that that's a real good place to get your wool. And... Uh, Let's see what else. Luanna's thanking us. Yep. And uh, Anita says, or no, B Lady's talking to Anita. And uh, let's see. When you when you have fun, you lose track of time, don't you though? And if the net goes down, we are done, says uh, the B Lady. Well. Yeah. We're done as far as being able to do YouTube if the if the web goes down. Uh, what but, else is there in life besides YouTube? Well, there you're going to be trying to figure out how to do your laundry if there's no electricity. You know, people need to, to be figuring out how to use that washboard. Mm, <laughs> you're going to be looking for some clothespins and a clothesline to hang their clothes up. You know, they're, they're going to be going back to the old way of doing things. I wish they knew how. They're going to be looking up people like me that could coach them on how to do some of the old time things is what they'll be doing. <laughs> and then Dave Hart says, uh, he's talking to you, he says, one of these days we'll meet halfway over a taco and a beer. Deal. <laughs> Don't have to twist my arm. And big lady says, uh, uh, so, so we cannot find wool. Uh, <laughs> Well, you'll be finding it uh, 
uh, from the farmers. You know, you go out and you see somebody that's got a bunch of sheep and then you go to talk to them about what they do with their wool when they shear. Most people shear their sheep in the spring. And so you'd want to talk to them in the springtime about buying some wool from them and get enough so that uh, you, you'd have enough to keep you busy for the year. Do some bartering if you have to. So there you go. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah, we're going to shut her down here for tonight, and we will be back here next Thursday night, Lord willing. Creeks don't rise. And see what kind of trouble we can get into between now and then, because I'm sure I'll get into some. I have no doubt. I, I'm always, you know, looking for some way to get into some kind of meanness. Uh, <laughs> I, I may be old, but I ain't dead yet, you know. <laughs> so with that being said, we're going to say good evening to all of you. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. And now next next Thursday, 35th anniversary of my 29th birthday. And I want you all to be here now to help me celebrate. And, you know, I, I ain't getting no younger. But they're numbered at this point. <laughs> so I expect everybody to show back up to celebrate with me. Be the birthday show. <laughs> Should be fun. So we'll see y'all next week. Same time, same channel. Night, everybody. Good night.